Hi, this is David from Team 6141, and in this video, I'm going to be doing an overview of pneumatics and the way that our team uses it, as well as uh, I'm going to give a little introduction to the robot simulator. So, um, I'd like to start off, this is just the file that Brendan was using in the last video. Just a little thing, these, this code right here works perfectly fine, but just as a convention, we're going to put private final in front of it, just to just because it's sort of a convention for class variables. Other than that, it would have worked perfectly fine, but it's just sort of more of a convention thing. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm just going to instantiate a couple objects and then I'm going to explain what they do. So we'll call this pneumatics and we'll do private final compressor. We'll call it comp is equal to new compressor like that. So this is going to be the air compressor. Now normally with an air compressor, assuming your pneumatic system is wired up properly, um, you wouldn't need to do this because it would automatically turn on and it would automatically turn off. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and so now we'll do private final double solenoid, call it solenoid is equal to new double solenoid. And so in the numbers, we're going to put zero and one. There's going to be two parameters. So I'm going to explain now what this is. So first I'll explain what a solenoid is. So if you look here, uh, this is a double solenoid. This is what we use on our team. And so um, what this is basically, you have a pneumatic system where the air comes in through here and this solenoid can basically route the air either out this way or out this way. And so, that is based off of whether a signal or a voltage is applied on this side or on this side. Now, this is done through the PCM or the pneumatics control module. And so you can see here you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So these are the different places where voltage can be applied to the solenoid. There can, there's also a single solenoid, but I'm only going to talk about the double because that's what our team uses. And so as you can see, it's plugged in in the 0 and the 1, which are these two things here. You have a positive and a negative, and there are two terminals. So this is one terminal, and this is another terminal. And you it's the reason why it's zero and one is because if voltage is applied through the zero then it'll push the solenoid one way and if it's applied to a one then then and taken off of the zero then it'll route the air the other way so that's basically how solenoid works um also you can see here this is where the compressor is wired this whole little unit is for pneumatics for everything that has to do with pneumatics so the way that the compressor normally works is that you plug it in into here, when a voltage is applied to the pneumatic to the uh, air compressor, um, it will start compressing air and pushing air into your system and filling it up. Now, what happens with the pneumatic system is, assuming it's wired up properly, you also have a pressure switch that is wired right here. And so, what this does is that once the system reaches 120 psi, the pressure switch will go off, and the voltage will be cut from the air compressor, and the it will stop filling up air into the system. So it's it's kind of like a like a hard cap on 120 psi. It won't fill up more than that. There's a lot more to pneumatics, but this is all you really have to know for now. So, um, if the compressor does this automatically, then why am I coding it, right? It, there's no point in coding it because it would do it automatically, um, and it would turn off automatically, right? So it turns on once you activate, once the, once you enable the robot. So once you put it in autonomous, once you put it in teleop, once you put it in test, any of those situations, the compressor will automatically start filling up until it hits 120 PSI and the switch goes off. So the reason why I'm coding it here and I want to show you how to code it is because, or how to control it rather, is because um, the compressor can be a little loud sometimes. And so if you're just working on other parts of the robot and you don't really want the pneumatic system to be going off, but you, have, you already have it wired up, then it's good to know how to control it. So we instantiated the compressor and we instantiated the double solenoid. Now, how are we going to control these things? So instead of using the normal joystick that we used last time, we're going to use instead an Xbox controller. So I'm going to put here Xbox controller. And so we'll say private final xbox controller we'll call it xbox um and we'll say new xbox controller oops and now we have to put the port so the joystick is on zero so now we'll put the xbox controller on one which is another usb port that would be on your computer 
on your laptop. And now we're going to implement this into our code. So what we're going to do first is we're going to um, program the solenoid. So we're basically what we're going to do is that you can see we have the Xbox controller here. We're going to use these bumpers for the solenoid. So these bumpers, they're just regular buttons. When they are pressed, they return a value of true. And when they are released, they return a value. When they are not pressed, they return a value of false, which is obviously getting constantly updated in the periodic method. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign it so that when the left one is pressed, one of these sides will fire and it will uh, direct the air one way and when the other one is pressed it will fire the other way and it will it will divert the air into the other path so we can do that by doing an uh, if else statement so we will go here and we'll say if um, if Xbox dot get bumper so we have here get bumper but now you can notice there are two bumpers so the way that we denote the left bumper and the right bumper is by saying hand dot, and then you have K left and K right. So we're going to do K left. Um, and so now when this returns true, so meaning the left bumper is pressed, we can say solenoid dot set value. And we're going to do double solenoid dot value dot and so now you have here k forward k off and k reverse k off means no voltage is applied to either side k volt k forward means that one side has voltage applied and the other one doesn't and k reverse means that one side has voltage applied and the other one doesn't so we're going to do k forward and so that will fire the solenoid one way so now we'll do else if and we'll say xbox dot get bumper and dot k right and we'll just do same thing here control c control v and we'll do k reverse okay so now we have let me just make this a little easier to read we have here now our if statement our little conditional thing which makes it so that um, when the left bumper is pressed, it'll fire one way, and when the right bumper is pressed, it'll fire the other way. So now, <clears throat> I'm not going to test it just yet. We'll get into that in the robot simulator, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to code the compressor so that when A is pressed, it'll turn on, and then when B is pressed, it will turn off. So now, like I mentioned before, the compressor automatically turns on when the robot is uh, enabled. So assuming we're only using the robot in teleop mode for testing, what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to say compressor or comp because that's what I named it dot compressor dot stop. There we go. That was the one. So what that will do is that it will turn off the compressor. So the compressor will be turned off. And now we're just going to do another if statement. We'll do another, we'll do an, yeah, we'll just do an if. So the condition will be xbox dot get a button so when the a button is pressed it will return true and when the a button is released it will return false now we don't need to specify a hand here because it's there's only one a button on the controller so get a button now here we will do comp dot start that will start the compressor and the compressor will start going and then here we'll do else if Xbox dot get B button. We'll do comp dot stop. So now when the B button is pressed, the compressor will turn off. And when the A button is pressed, the compressor will turn on. Now with this, um, even if you are over 120 PSI and the pressure switch has gone off and you try to turn it on pressing the A button, it won't work because it physically cuts off the current when the pressure switch goes off. So that's just something important to know. You can't turn it on if, you're, um, if your pneumatic system is over 120 PSI. So that's, that's kind of a nice fail safe to have in there. I mean, 
it's you need to have it or else your robot won't pass the inspection but that's that's just something to know okay so now we have all this coded and now we're just going to test if it works so how are we going to test if it works if you don't have the robot so in order to do that i'm just going to plug in the xbox controller that i have here give me one second plug this in so now my xbox controller is plugged in so now i'm going to start the robot simulator let me save first so i can build the code just so you can see that it works give it a second Okay, so it works, and now we're going to simulate the robot code on desktop. So now this is going to come up. You're going to select the first option and click OK. And so a window should show up with the simulator, which is right here. So hopefully you can see this properly. It's a little bit small, but um, I can actually turn the view up. I can make it zoom like 125 percent yeah that's better okay so now there's a bunch of confusing stuff here you don't need to worry about network tables for now and these are the motor controllers for the drivetrain now i actually have a joystick here so i will plug in the joystick as well just so i can show you that the drivetrain will work as well with this so I'll plug in the joystick and you'll see it'll show up on the left um okay so now you can see I have the PWM outputs. This is for the Victor SPs, and then these are the SPXs. You know, because they're different motor controllers, they show up differently. But at the end of the day, they're still PWM outputs. So we have here the PWM outputs. And now I would also like, if you go here into hardware, we want to show solenoids. I would also like to see the compressor, which is right here. And so now um, you have joystick zero and joystick one. So you can see here, the Xbox controller is currently plugged into the zero port on my computer because I plugged it in first. And then the Extreme 3D Pro uh, joystick, the big joystick that I showed in the last video um, was uh, plugged into the one slot. But what you can do is, for just for the simulator, is you can drag it in. So I have the Xbox controller on zero. We can drag it into the joystick one spot. And you see Xbox controller and Logitech Extreme. So for all intents and purposes, the Logitech Pro controller, or the, the big flight stick will act as the uh, controller in port zero and the Xbox controller will act as the one in point one. So now what we're going to do, don't worry about autonomous and test because we're not using those right now. We have all our code written in Teleop. So we're going to um, enable Teleop. So now that we have Teleop enabled, you can see that the compressor is now disabled, right? So with a disabled compressor, now if I press the A button on the controller, it will turn on. You can see here at the bottom that when I press the different buttons, it they light up. So I pressed A and it's enabled. And now if I press B, it will disable. So I can turn it on and off by pressing A and B. And now if you look at the solenoid up here, if I press the left bumper, one will turn on. And if I press the right bumper, you can see at the bottom as I press the buttons, the PCM switches. The pneumatics control module switches the solenoid. So now I also have the joystick, the big um, one right here, the other one, the, the Extreme 3D Pro. And as I push it forward and back, you can see that the motor values change as they go forward and back. And as I twist it, they also change, which corresponds to the robot turning as I twist it and the robot going forward and back as I move it forward and back. And so that's basically how Robot Simulator works. You can mess around more with it. There's more things that you can show once you start getting into more uh, complex uh, concepts. But this is the very basics of how to use it. And this is also going back to here, the very basics of how to program a double solenoid um, and how to use an Xbox controller. Um, anything that has two things on the Xbox controller, like the triggers or the bumpers or the sticks where you have the X and Y axis on the sticks, you're going to use hand.k left or hand.k right. Anything that only has one button, like the A, B, X, Y or the start and select, I'm pretty sure the start and select, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure the start and select don't require um, hand.k left or hand.k right. But anything with two is going to use that. Other than that, you can also program buttons on the joystick. The joystick has buttons. It's the same concept as on the Xbox controller, except you don't have um, you don't have hands and they're numbered. So on the actual joystick, there are numbers. And you can see those numbers and um, code them based on the numbers that are on the joystick. And so that's basically how that works. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.